Kapil Dev was one of those cricketers who, certainly when he became captain, he led from the front. He inspired his team with deeds and uh, he you know, offered up plenty with both bat and ball. A, a really fabulous, one of the great all-rounders in cricket. And he's bowling. Good delivery again from Kapil Dev. Cut it back in, might just have flicked the pads. So Mitmarks goes for eight. Big trouble for England at 177 for eight in the 54th over. Kapil Dev with as much ability as anyone who's played cricket, but mentally strong uh, and still is. I can tell you, you meet Kapil now and you listen to him talk about the game, he thinks tough. England went into that semi-final at Old Trafford as, as big favourites. They qualified quite comfortably from their four-team group and on home soil, you, you know, they, they would have been very strong favourites and, and there was a real feeling in the country that uh, England could win their first ever World Cup. Another wicket to Kapil Dev and Alec goes 202 for nine. It was 60 overs in, in those days and England were bowled out for just over 200. Uh, Kapil Dev got three wickets and Mahinda Amanath, who people generally remember as a, as a batsman, but with uh, his canny medium pace took quite a few useful wickets in that tournament as well and England were bowled out for a, a pretty paltry score. That's perfectly timed. The last ball of the day, Bob Willis's leg stump goes over and England are dismissed at the end of 60 overs for a score of 230. Kapil got three wickets against England. He was captain that day and obviously did a really good job leading India because England just uh, didn't seem to be in the match at any stage. Given that India had rarely troubled England in test cricket or much in one-day cricket to that point in English conditions, I guess it was a big shot that they were losing to them in that semi-final. Until facing Bob Willis, three runs wanted for India to reach the final. And that will be, I think, two. England won the toss and batted first, and they sort of just meandered their way to about 200 and odd. And against a good Indian batting line, it was not enough. There we are. That's the England total. Two, one, three for four. The Indian reply. Bob Willis waiting for the field to be cleared. This, I think, we can confidently predict will be the last ball. And there can be no English recriminations. It will be a tremendous Indian victory. They've beaten West Indies, they've beaten Australia. There's a common misconception about that India side that it was essentially Kapil Dev's team. And, and while he did have an outstanding tournament, it really was a team effort. Guys like Madan Lal and, and Roger Binney and Mahinder Amanath, who got man of the match in the, in the semi-final and, and the final in English conditions against a team who many thought were the best in the world at the time in the West Indies. They produced a masterclass of adapting to conditions and coming to the party when it mattered. So they'll be happy with the single because that brings up the 100 for India. 100 on the board, four men out, six now to Patel. In 1983, the World Cup was again held in England and the scene was set for a third West Indies triumph in a row. They really were the masters of the one day game. Viv Richards still in his prime as a batsman. Uh, they had great pace bowlers that were able to deliver um, you know, devastating blows. Uh, and uh, up against an India side that um, many had found perhaps a little surprising that they had got as far as they had done. They certainly were given no chance at all of getting one over on the West Indies. But of course, in a two horse race in the final, anything could happen. Well, that's safe enough. The ball's bouncing that much, you've got a real good chance of getting away with it, and Srikant did just that. The West Indies were the best team in the world at the time and they had so many big names that uh, just a, a look at the team sheet would have been quite daunting. But uh, India had some very plucky characters themselves. They, they played pretty well in the, uh, in the Caribbean Test Series that, that previous winter and they had an emerging side with lots of big game players who would have relished the challenge. Having said that, he's just given away four runs with a rank long hop. This is the danger time for West Indies where Gomes and Richards have to bowl out 12 overs between them. At the halfway stage, India had been bowled out for 183, which would have been a poor score, especially in a final. And coming up against that West Indies attack, they really just kind of blinked in the headlights. It, it took a few decent partnerships lower down the order even to drag them up to that score. And in a 60-over game with you know the might of the West Indies batting lineup, people really would have been forgiven for thinking this could only have gone one way. It's all over, that's the end. 183 all out.
It wasn't a great total. It was something that I guess put them in the game. But the West Indies, with their powerful batting lineup, the likes of Desmond Haynes, Viv Richards, um, would have fancied getting over the line and collecting their third triumph. Good shot. Not so good. Beautifully caught. He's hit that away to within 15 yards of the boundary. And the Indian skipper has done a tremendous job to get back there. Marvellous running catch. And Richards has gone for 33. He was charging through calling Desmond Haynes for two. But didn't quite get it. It would have landed 10 to 15 yards inside the boundary. And Kapil Dev had a long way to go to make his ground. Kapil Dev famously said we might not have a winning total boys but we have a total we can fight with and fight they did and the sight of Kapil running back to the grandstand to catch Viv over his right shoulder it's one of the great sights in cricket as is the moment of victory which was celebrated not just by Indian people here in England but Indian people all over the world who must surely that night have had the party of their lives and that's out yes it's all over this time Lost his nerve in the end, did Michael Holden tried to swing that straight ball to leg. It's another wicket for Almanath and how delighted he looks. 140 all out, West Indies. On the margin of their victory, 43 runs as India race into the pavilion with the Prudential Cup players. Tremendous victory. Rank outsiders of 33 to 1 when this competition got underway and they've beaten West Indies twice, they've beaten Australia, they've beaten England and they round off a fantastic fortnight. That Indian World Cup team were fated as heroes on, on their return to India. It really catalyzed interest in the game uh, and especially the one day game. Really the roots of what we now see is this enormous explosion in Indian cricket in the 90s and, and around the turn of the century. This in many ways was the start of it. And, uh, Observation here for a couple there to receive the trophy. Tremendous performance by this Indian side. And here's a man who's been largely responsible for it over the last two weeks. Skipped the side quite beautifully and made his own contributions with bat and ball. India has always been a huge cricketing nation, but to win on the global stage, to claim their first World Cup really was a game changer. And it is what helped cricket move from being, I guess, a popular sport to being the only sport that the Indians were bothered about. That's why to this day, Kapil Dev is a living legend and it is why India and cricket go hand in hand. <laughs>